Hawkins Precision has just introduced a new line of brakes called Updraft. In this video, we're gonna put them to test on two different rifles. It's new, weekly updates from Ultimate Reloader. We're talking about free resources, exclusives, hot deals, and more. Three ways to subscribe. Click on the button on the website. Go to ultimatereloader.com slash subscribe or click on the QR code. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. When I was talking with my friends at Hawkins Precision and learned about the updraft break, I knew I had to get my hands on some of these and put them to the test. What we've got here is the latest break from Hawkins Precision. If you've seen our previous story covering the Tank ST, this break is actually pretty similar, but it's got one important difference and that's this first port right here. So this is a five port break Four of the ports are going to just basically serve the general purpose of reducing recoil. But the first port is able to deflect the gases sideways, there's no rear angling, and upwards to help counterbalance muzzle rise. And so the, the muzzle rise piece of it is, is pretty obvious, but blowing the gases straight out to the side uh, prevents more of that shock wave from hitting the shooter and that can reduce the biggest downside of brakes and that's if you go to a match and you're shooting a couple hundred rounds you can get that sort of minor concussion that kind of numbness of the mind minor headache you know those sorts of things i've definitely felt it and i can tell you from shooting this brake this is effective i don't recall that familiar slap in the face feeling that you can feel at all so there's a couple different options here. We've got a one inch diameter. This refers to the collar diameter, just to be clear, not the diameter of the body itself. There's a one inch diameter and a 1.2 inch diameter. We've got the 1.2 inch diameter models here. They're also available in a 6.5 millimeter caliber and for 30 caliber. Installation is the same as the Tank ST. Let me show you how that's performed. For the installation of the updraft brake, I'm using the Aero Products Rock Vice, which is now rapidly becoming one of my favorite tools in the gunsmithing shop. We can take our, our Arca rail here on the Samson stock. And what's really nice about this is just how securely this is mounted. We can kind of articulate the rifle in and out, and then we can angle just the way we want it. And I mean, literally, this is, this is super, super solid. So we've got, the rifle secured, we've got the updraft brake, we've got a 3 8 inch Allen key, and we've also got a 50 thousandths Allen key. Uh, there is an Allen key that's included uh, with the brake, the little L style there. I've got thread grease on here already, so that's all good. What I'm gonna do is kind of bottom this jam nut out against the brake. Tighten, tighten this down and what we want to do is we want to back it up so that the Hawkins logo is showing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get the jam nut against the shoulder with a little bit more tightening to do. It doesn't take a whole lot here right and I'm just going to turn that until it's level and then we're going to take our Allen key and tighten these little set screws and what that's going to do for us is it's going to preserve this setting if you will. If we wanted to take the break off to clean the rifle or to decarbon the crown or, or whatever that was that we needed to do, we can now very easily do that and have it go right back on, right? So we're gonna remove the rake, we're gonna put it back on and it's gonna index exactly into the same position. Really good design. So as you can see, installation is straightforward and what I really like about this design with the locking collar is the fact that you can remove the brake and reinstall it without having to mess with timing. Very convenient and I love the fact that it has this 3 8 inch hex port on the end that makes it so easy to use an Allen key. But what is the purpose of the brake? The purpose of the brake entirely is to reduce recoil and to reduce muzzle rise. So what I wanted to do first was to put this on our Ultimate Reloader recoil rig. This is a rig that we developed uh, based on what Calzant over the Precision Rifle blog had put together, but we've recently made some major advances to this platform. So our old platform would capture at 20,000 samples per second and involved a lot of manual data manipulation, some custom software that I wrote, all that. 
Now we've added the Duasoft Sirius 8 channel DAC unit. This is an amazing unit that can do 200,000 samples per second, which isn't really necessary for recoil. I think we were running 50,000 samples per second for this test, but it is very helpful when you go to do things like testing chamber pressure, measuring that, and looking at uh, noise reduction for suppressors, and you're running these ultra-sensitive microphones and need super responsive and high data rate type DAC software and hardware. We're also using a PCB Piezo Electronics load cell, and this gives us super, super clean data. Let's first take a look at the three different scenarios that we ran for the 300 PRC. So if you take a look here, this is a screen capture from our Duasoft X application. This is the software that we run that talks to the DAC module that shows us the data and can align it in real time, which is a huge advancement over what we had before. So we ran three different configurations, the bare muzzle, the factory radial brake that came with this Bergara HMR Wilderness, and then also the Hawkins updraft. So the bare muzzle had a peak force of 1,357.5 pounds. The radial brake had a peak force of 506 pounds. So that's a 62.7% reduction in recoil right off the bat just by putting a simple brake on. But when we throw on the updraft brake, peak forces were 342.9 pounds or a 74.7% percent reduction in recoil. Amazing, truly amazing. And if we compare the radio brake to the updraft brake, the updraft reduced recoil 32.2 percent over the performance of the radio brake. So that's quite a difference just going from the radio brake to the updraft brake. Okay, and then moving over to 6.5 Creedmoor. This is kind of more of a fair representation of a PRS rifle. Here we've got the Bat Machine Hammerhead, we've got the Foundation Samson Stock, we've got a 26 inch barrel, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor. This is a really heavy rig, and that's the way I like to shoot, is with a really heavy rifle because it's a lot more steady and it's a lot easier to shoot tight groups and that kind of thing. And if you're shooting a positional stage at a PRS match, that weight really ha makes a huge difference because you don't want to come off target, right? It's not about being a man and being able to handle recoil. It's about seeing your trace, seeing your hits, and seeing your misses, right? That first shot, if you are down two mils and to the right three mils and whatever, you make those need to make those corrections, that's really going to make the difference in a stage between completing it with a lot of points and potentially not even hitting the target in some cases. Okay, so we took two shots with the 6.5 Creedmoor, one with the bare muzzle and one with the updraft brake. We're using factory burger ammunition with 140 grain projectile, pretty standard stuff. So the peak force for the bare muzzle was 649.9 pounds. And as you can see, the peak was clipped just a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what that was. There are different dynamics. It's a pretty smooth curve, so I'm guessing that's actually real data. So anyhow, 649.9 pounds for the bare muzzle, 424.4 pounds with the updraft brake, right? So we, in this case, we reduced recoil by 34.7% compared to the bare muzzle. Now this rifle does not recoil a lot with its massive heavy weight and its light recoiling 6.5 Creedmoor. But to take that down 34.7%, that's, that's only two thirds, it's actually less than two thirds of what it would be with the bare muzzle, that is significant. All right, well recoil is great and data and analytics are awesome, but what about actually shooting the rifle? The first thing I did was to sight in the rifle at 100 yards. Can't recall what muzzle device I had on last time. So when I installed the updraft brake, the first thing I do is go to 100 yards and shoot. And I'll have to tell you, right away I noticed a distinct lack of that slap in the face. And I also noticed the rifle did not move. Like it literally did not move, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I only took a few shots, a couple went into the same hole. That's always a really good feeling. But then I decided to stretch the legs of this rifle just a little bit. 
So we shot a rock chuck target, a steel target at 335 yards. I took a few shots there, all few on target. Very easy to see the steel moving. The rifle did not move, awesome. The third shot actually set the, the target right off of the hangar, which I found amusing. Uh, then we moved out to 706 yards, right? And this is where things get real. And again, no problem hitting the target at least three times in a row. And I was able to see my trace, able to see my impacts. Really, really a good feeling. So there's a quick look at Hawkins Precision's new updraft break. I can say wholeheartedly, if you're shooting PRS or long range, this is an absolutely fantastic break to go with. It has all of the advantages that we have with Tank ST, easy installation, uh, the lack of needing to do indexing and clocking each time you install it, uh, the fact that it's made by Hawkins Precision, super high quality made in the USA. But now with this extra port that has the sideways gases and the upward inclination to help with muzzle rise and to help with concussive forces and blast waves, this thing works absolutely awesome. And as you saw from the recoil data that we collected for both rifles, this brake is really effective at taming recoil, both with the 300 PRC and the 6.5 Creedmoor. What I'd like to know from you is what do you think about the updraft? What do you think about this idea of that extra port that's gonna direct the gases to help reduce concussive forces and help reduce muzzle rise? Drop a comment and we'll start that discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.